Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat and this session would look at causes of legal action. This is part of the professional liability of auditor. This topic is, is covered in auditing and attestation course, an undergraduate or graduate course, and obviously covered on the CPA exam. If you want additional lecture about auditing and attestation, please go to my website, farhatlectures.com, where I have over 170 auditing and attestation. In this session, we're going to look at causes of legal action against the auditor when they commit misconduct. We have three level under the law for auditor misconduct, and we need to distinguish between them. And those three are ordinary negligence, gross negligence, and fraud. And the difference between all three is intent. So the main difference between them is intent. So let's take a look at what is ordinary negligence. Well, basically, ordinary negligence means I was careless. I did not perform my job properly, but I had no intent. I did not mean to fool the client, and I did not commit a fraud. In, in other words, I was not trying to steal money or commit fraud or book the financial statements. Basically, failure to exercise is a reasonable level of care that causes the damage. Okay? Here, again, I was careless, and the most important thing under ordinary negligence, there is no intent to deceive. I did not intend to deceive the client or the users of the financial statement. Now, gross negligence is basically, it's a part of negligence, but it's negligence on steroid. Here, here what I did is I failure to exercise even the minimal level of care. I was, I was really careless here, okay? It's a reckless disregard. It's called reckless disregard. I was really careless, but at the same time, I had no intent whatsoever to deceive the client or the users of the financial statements. Okay, the third level is fraud. Fraud is rare, but we have to be aware of. Fraud is you had the intention. You had the intention to mis mislead someone, either the client, the users, usually the users of the financial statement. It's the intentional concealment of mis or misrepresentation of material fact that causes damages to those deceived. So you wanted to deceive them, and as a result, you actually deceived them. Okay, here the plaintiff, it's harder for the plaintiff to prove it, to prove it, but they have to prove the auditor knowingly deceived, deceived them. Because if you want to tell, if you want to claim that they committed fraud, then it's your responsibility to show that they indeed deceived you. Okay? Here, you have to act with something called legal jargon called scienter. You have to act with scienter. It means the, the intention to commit a fraud. The intention to commit a fraud. Now, in your opinion, which of the three is the easiest for the lawyers to prove? Okay? And hopefully, you know, the easiest for the lawyers to prove it's either ordinary negligence or gross negligence. Why? Because there is no intent. You don't have to show intent to deceive. Now, how do you show negligence or gr gross negligence? Easy. You just can't show the paperwork. You can show from the paperwork that the, that the auditor was, was careless. You did, not, you did not check all the boxes, for example, or you did not carry the steps in the audit program that you wanted to carry. Show me that you carried it. You might have carried it, but you may not documented it. Why? Because you were careless. Well, that's easy to prove. It's not there. I don't see that you documented that step. Well, you acted with carelessness or recklessness. Okay? So the paperwork can show this. It's easy to prove. Why? You don't have to prove you don't have to prove intent. Now, bear in mind that auditors do sometimes, very rarely, do commit fraud. And one case that most probably you're learning about in your audit course is ESM Government Securities in Florida. And this story is basically it's a classic story about auditor actually committing fraud okay and it's an interesting case uh, for uh, the auditor the uh, the person that was uh, involved is jose gomez and what he did jose gomez he was auditing esm securities and in one year he missed something he missed one of their inter-entity transactions that booked some 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 fictitious gains so he missed it then at some point he was talking in front of his client which happens to be ES, ESM Securities, he was telling them that he was going to be a partner, but he's having some financial difficulty because Jose Gomez did not really have good personal finance skills. He was telling them that, you know, he needed some money to be able to buy his uh, partner, partnership share in Alexander Graham. So guess what? ESM Securities lend him the money, which is, that's a no-no. Lend him the money to buy his partnership share to become a partner. That's fine. So far, so good. I mean, he did violate his independence at this point. But what happened next is Jose discovered 
in subsequent year discovered that ESM Securities was actually committing fraud. So he went to the client and said, okay, hold on a second. I think there's a fraud going on here. What's happening? And I told him, yes, we've been doing this for the past few years and you've been signing on it. Now, again, Jose, he was, he was not aware of it, but now he's aware of it. So, so he didn't want to look bad because they started to abuse him too. They told him, what happened if you go back to your partnership and tell them you missed that transaction and that fraud in the past few years? And also, what happened if, if they know that we actually lend you money to buy into the partnership? So basically, Jose was part of the fraud and he committed, he helped them cover the fraud. He covered and covered the fraud for several years. And it, I believe this is a good case um, for students to view. And what I did is I'm gonna, I, I put the link for the YouTube, Alexander Grant CPA partner, Jose Gomez, said this is the partnership, Alexander Grant, and he was a partner in the, the, the firm ESM Securities, government, ESM government securities. So I suggest you view this video just to kind of see Gomez because he's going to tell the story in his own in his own words of what happened and why he went to jail. Okay. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me. If you're studying for your CPA exam, study hard and don't be ever in the shoes of Jose Gomez. You don't want to be in his shoes ever, never. But that's why you should see the case so you would you would learn a little bit more about what you should do under those circumstances. If you have any questions, once again, email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating or contributing money. And if you're studying for your CPA, as always, study hard. It's worth it.